Let's say I'm shopping for a new apartment in downtown Philadelphia, something that we can all, some, somewhere we've all been. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm looking for a new apartment, I am thinking about the small details, the questions that can't be answered by the Craigslist post. For example, is there anywhere in my apartment where I can catch a view of the sunset? Is there enough bike parking around my building? Questions like this. Now, not so long ago, my options for researching the answers to these questions would have pretty much been limited to either go there myself or phone a friend to check for me. But I'm pleased to say that nowadays, we have the visualization technology to answer these questions, these complicated spatial questions, from anywhere in the world, anywhere you have access to a modern browser. Now, I don't know, um, I don't know about you guys, but when you picture a map, what are you picturing? Um, for a lot of you, it's a 2D image. And I have to gloss over a lot of cartographic history here, but um, I would say one of the first big steps forward in map technology was putting our maps on the web where everyone could access them. That was a huge step forward. Now, in 2010, another, another TED speaker came and gave a talk about um, what was then current technology. But I'm pleased to say that we've come a long way since this. This is a step from 2D to 3D maps, taking images and mapping them onto the inside of a sphere. So, 2010. It's been another seven years since then, and I'm very pleased to say that the geospatial and graphics community have been really hard at work. And nowadays, the world of online maps looks more like this. This is something fundamentally different from what we just saw. This is a full 3D recreation of my office building, actually. And this, this is modern cartography. This is the latest in our online visualization tools, and it's going to change the way that we interact with the world. That's what I'm here to talk to you about today. So, first of all, I keep emphasizing the 3D, but is 3D such a big deal? Short answer, yes, absolutely. Moving from 2D to 3D is like moving from radio to television. We have literally unlocked a new dimension in what we can visualize. Why? Why is 3D so important? Well, we live in a 3D world. We should be able to visualize it in 3D. There is, in short, a lot of data that is just a lot more intuitive to understand in 3D. So I have, as an example here, satellite visualization. This is a visualization of satellite trajectories projected onto a 2D map. As you can see, it doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, I can tell you, for instance, that the green and pink satellites are moving at near constant velocities, but then why do they appear to speed up at the top and bottom of the map and slow down in the middle? Well, this is a distortion introduced by map projection, trying to flatten a sphere onto a plane, the same thing that makes Greenland look so big. Um, the yellow, this yellow satellite trajectory doesn't make much sense at all. It's not until we, we take this 3D data and actually try and visualize it in 3D that suddenly this information makes a lot more sense. So, I want to emphasize that this is a really exciting time in geospatial history and graphics in general, because although you may have seen 3D graphics in the context of, say, a Pixar movie or in a 3D video game, this is the first time that we have had 3D mapping technology available in the browser, online, for anyone to see. And as if that's not enough, <coughs> moreover, the graphics and geospatial communities are hard at work developing a set of tools so that anyone, not just a programmer or a cartographer, can use this visualization technology and build applications with it. Now, the next question, of course, is, what might you want to build, given this kind of visualization technology? Now, when faced with a totally new medium, I think it's often difficult to imagine what the implications of new technology is going to be. The internet, smartphones, the scope is difficult to understand. And so I want to start by showing you guys a, a set of interesting applications. So, for example, 
Something that's become hip recently in social media is 360 video. Something that looks like this. This is a 360 capture of a, someone's skydiving trip. But I want you to imagine for a moment, rather than just sharing something like this, which is akin to the Bing Maps example, the street view that I was showing you earlier, just a projection, what if instead you could share a full 3D scan of an environment where you've been, such that your friends, after the fact, can walk through spaces where you've been? Something entirely different. Now, a, an example with slightly larger implications. Let's say that I'm an architect in New York City, and I'm trying to plan development um, around Central Park. Well, if I, have a, if, if I have a full 3D environment, like the one I'm showing you here, if I want to answer a, shadow say, or answer a question about shadowing or visibility, how will I affect the spaces around me, I can actually move the position of the sun in the sky and see exactly how shadows will be cast at any time of day, any time of year. Yet another application unique to 3D mapping. This here is a visualization of historic earthquake data in 3D. Now, why, why are earthquakes 3D? Well, they, like the satellite movements, are a type of data that is inherently 3D in that um, as you move further and further away from an earthquake's point of origin, their tremors decrease in strength. So an earthquake that starts close to the surface will have a much greater impact than an earthquake that starts further underground. Natural hazard planning is just another use case for 3D map technology. It's incredibly important. Now, the long and short of what I'm showing you is that there are so many, many, many possible applications of this technology. I could show you interesting novel use cases of 3D visualization literally all day. They say a picture's worth a thousand words. How about a video? How about a video where you can control the camera and you can walk through space and time and you can layer and filter real information about the real world? We have literally unlocked a new dimension in our visualization technology and I really can't wait to see all the things that we'll build with it. Now, before I go any further in our uh, discussion of geospatial and map technology, we really have to talk about data. The first ingredient in a good map is information about our environment, having good and detailed information. That's geospatial data. And this could be any information that's associated with a specific location in space. So information about our natural environment, like what's the terrain look like at this point? Or how much rainfall does this region get? But it can also be data about our urban environments, such as where are all the buildings in Philadelphia? Or where are all the Chinese restaurants even? Yelp style information. Now, more data is usually better, of course, but geospatial data in particular is important because it's an information need that we all have in common. No matter who you are, no matter where you live, you can benefit from having detailed and accurate information about the world immediately around you. And the numbers are with me on this one. Google Maps, for example, has over one billion users, and that's just a single map application. We have, an in we have incredible need for geospatial and map data. It's a good time to be alive. We are in the midst of a geospatial renaissance. Today, we have more geospatial data available than we ever have had before. So to give you an idea of the scales we're working with, as we speak, ge our satellites are circling the globe, taking images of every square foot of the surface of the Earth. A single one of these satellites can capture seven terapixels of data a day. Now we need a reference point here. So a smartphone nowadays, a good smartphone might have a seven megapixel camera. Seven, or a megapixel is one million pixels, more or less. A terapixel is a million megapixels. So that's a million smartphones circling the globe, taking images. It's incredibly high resolution data also. One pixel here, can be about um, one square foot in resolution. 
If you were to print out a terapixel image, it would cover two football fields almost, a football field and a half. Now, it's not just imagery we're working with here today, though. We even have 3D data. So this is information like what we're looking at here. This is a detailed 3D model of Mount St. Helens. And the amount of 3D data that we have available today is largely thanks to a lot of advances in our 3D data acquisition technology. So one important technique that we're working with nowadays is uh, LIDAR, for instance. LIDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging. You basically take a plane, fly over a 3D surface, and send out laser pulses to detect how far away you are from the surface at many adjacent points. Given those points of information, you can construct a high-resolution 3D model, like the one we're looking at on screen now. Another important breakthrough in 3D technology, photogrammetry. Photogrammetry is a technique where I can take a plane or a drone, or even a smartphone nowadays, really, and circle around a 3D object, taking many images of it from many different angles. I can then take these images, find common features in each one, and stitch them together into a high-resolution 3D model, like the one we're looking at here. Now, neither of these two techniques that I just mentioned are particularly novel techniques, but what is new is that the technology has matured to the point where we can now use this technology extremely widely, very cheaply. And that brings me to our next point in our discussion of geospatial data which is that not only are private companies, which traditionally were our data providers, but many, many different organizations, for instance, governments even, are getting in on this game, making geospatial data, collecting it, and making it widely available. For instance, what we're looking at here is a project called Swiss Topo. The Swiss government is a huge proponent of open access geospatial data. This project, is a website in which you can go and download an incredible variety of information about the entire nation of Switzerland. This includes um, road maps, bus maps, terrain data, 3D building models that you can view in both 2D and 3D. It's incredibly exciting that governments now have recognized this important information need. And that's not all. It's not just companies, it's not just governments, but also it's individuals. Individuals like any of you have, are contributing to projects like the one we see here. This is a project called OpenStreetMaps. And it is a Wikipedia-style project in which anyone can contribute um, geospatial data to create incredible detailed maps, such as this one here. This is a 3D view of New York City in full 3D made of 1.1 billion, or sorry, 1.1 million building models. So, I hope I've convinced you of the broad range of applications that this technology, that this information has. So, we have the basis of the infrastructure, we have the data to view. The question is, what next? Well, because this technology has such broad applications, and because this information is relevant to everyone, the next issue is making sure that anyone can access it. And this is an incredibly difficult problem. We need as much open source data as possible. We need good open standards in our software to create a good ecosystem for development. We need, we need fundamentally a lot of communication about this problem in order to create infrastructure for viewing, sharing, and authoring applications that build upon this technology. And this is an incredibly difficult set of problems. However, I think there's a lot of reasons to feel optimistic. Why? Well, take a look at this visualization tool. This is a 3D recreation of downtown Philadelphia, Center City. It was built using that technique, photogrammetry, that I introduced. They flew a plane over and collected 28,000 images and stitched them together into this incredible visualization tool. Something like this, I can use to answer any of those complex spatial questions that I posed to you at the beginning of this talk. Can I see the sunset from my bedroom window? 
And something like this is built off of the contributions from so many organizations, so many individuals, so many decades of engineering research, and so many individual contributions. This is proof that we as a global community can get together to make the right decisions. So overall, I want to emphasize that 3D mapping, geospatial technology, what I've been talking about, is a problem for everyone, not just the experts. If you're an engineer, we need your help to continue developing the infrastructure. Even if you're not an engineer, we need your help to continue collecting and curating data so that we have information, valuable information, to visualize. And no matter who you are, we need your help to envision a future of applications of novel experiences that harness the full power of this 3D. So overall, what I've shown you is the basis of incredibly important infrastructure that will change the way we interact with the world. I sincerely hope that you'll be a part of it. Thank you.